Hi friends, welcome back. So we will continue our discussion on fixed income. In the previous video, we discussed about government securities. So why an investor who is looking to shift uh, money from bank and starting to look at investments in the market has a very compelling reason to start with government securities. Now in the world of fixed income, government securities is the first step. There are several other kind of fixed income funds which an investor can definitely look at. All right. So there are two kinds of funds that I'm going to look at. All right. First, before I start looking at that, let me do a little deep dive into tell you what are the various ways of looking into a fixed income fund. Like in equity, you have the large cap, mid cap. So there is a capitalization way of looking at funds, right? So you can look at large cap funds, mid cap funds, small cap funds, and you also can look at thematic funds, right? Sector specific funds. In the world of fixed income, there are two ways to look at funds. So one is called the credit funds and the second are called duration funds. All right. So let's start. So they are called credit funds and duration funds. So these are the two ways of looking at fixed income funds. All right. So what is a credit fund and what is a duration fund? And I'm going to place GSEC fund in one of these buckets. Before I do that, keep thinking about where do you think GSEC fund would be? All right. And if you're enjoying these videos, keep liking, sharing and commenting on them. Great. Let's go ahead. Okay. So what is a credit fund? Credit fund is all about credit worthiness. So if you're lending money to somebody, that person is returning the money back to you. So governments, governments, when they borrow money, so obviously the credit worthiness of government is pretty high. So GSEC fund is a part of a credit oriented kind of funds and it is it is at the very top. Okay. Then the next kind of credit funds are borrowers who are rated AAA. All right. Then there are funds which are issued by corporates who are rated AA plus and AA and AA minus. Okay. And A plus single A, A minus and so on. The last category of, in, so this is an investment grades, right? So you invest in GSEC funds, you invest into AAA, AA plus, AA so on and so forth. And the last category of investment grade is called triple B minus rated corporates. Okay. So fixed income fund is all about lending money to somebody who is looking to borrow. So while they are looking to borrow, we should also know their credit worthiness, correct? So this is what these ratings denote. These are called ratings, okay? Ratings. Rating of what? Rating of their credit worthiness. So these are called credit ratings. So these are called credit ratings, okay? These are called credit ratings. So GSEC actually doesn't get, so they are called sovereign. So at the very top, so they are called sovereign. Sovereign. Sovereign bonds are called government securities. Okay. Now, if I dissect it a little more in India, there could be government of India who is looking to borrow money or it could be a state government also. Like government of Maharashtra, government of Gujarat, government of West Bengal, government of Karnataka. They also run deficit budget and they are also in the process of borrowing. So, you could either invest in a government of India security or you can invest in a state government security. All right. And these are both sovereign. So both of them are taken to be at the very top. That is sovereign. Then comes AAA, AA plus, AA, AA minus, A plus, so on and so forth. And the last rung is B minus. And the worst rating is D, which is called default. You don't invest in them. Okay. Triple, uh, you know, triple C plus, triple C, triple C minus, triple C minus, and then comes your single D. Okay. But people generally stop at triple B minus. You can invest into non-investment grade also, but definitely as the name goes, it is not an investment category. Okay. So GSEC is at the very top of credit worthiness. So why did I start with GSEC yesterday? Because you were originally a bank depositor. You were investing in a, keeping your money in a bank because you were enjoying the safety that the bank is offering, the liquidity the bank is offering. 
and you are also getting some interest against that. So if you are looking to migrate out of a bank, you definitely would in start with something which is very close to the characteristics of a bank deposit. So definitely government securities one from a credit worthiness perspective. All right. Because in the world of fixed income, nobody is looking to take an undue risk uh, of risk of returns get going lower. Okay. So everybody wants their returns to be always more or less confirmed, assured. So that is why it is called Sunishchit I. So this is credit. Okay. So there is another way of looking at fixed income fund. So this is this is one way of looking at the risk. Correct. The one way of looking at the risk. So there is another way of looking at the risk in the world of fixed income. That is basis duration. So let me, you know, look at duration in little detail. Okay, little detail. Okay. Duration. You know what? Uh, so I'm going to touch about this duration concept very briefly in this video because duration is a very elaborate concept and I'm sure we are going to create multiple videos, not just one, maybe multiple videos about what duration is all about, why one should look at duration and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to very briefly touch about this uh, so that you get the concept about why I'm going to talk about the next fund after GSEC after this, okay, just to understand. Because moment you invest into fixed income, you are looking for a return, correct? Everybody is looking for a return. The return doesn't come out of thin air. Return is there because of risk, okay? Now, there are broadly three kinds of risks in the fixed income market, okay? First one is the credit risk, which I just discussed. Second one is the interest, interest rate risk okay and then comes liquidity risk okay so i'm going, not going to go deeper into this right now there's going to be i'm sure separate videos on this but i'm just going to talk about this in one minute so that you get an understanding about this concept of duration okay all right now what is interest rate risk all about okay so when you are investing into a, let's say, government of India security, okay, and let's assume this is a security which is maturing in five years time. And let us assume that the government has issued this at, let's say, 9% coupon. Coupon is the interest rate that is being offered by government of India and they are going to give us 9% every year, all right. So what it means, if I give government of India 100 rupees today, in the first year I'll get 9, second year I'll get 9, third year I'll get 9, fourth year I'll get 9, and the fifth year I'll get 9, plus the 100 rupees that I had given, the government is going to return me back this money. Okay, so this is what the cash flows are going to look like. So this is what the cash flows are going to look like. Now what is interest rate risk? Interest rate risk says that if while government has borrowed this at 9%, let us assume that after one year, in the first year I have received 9, but in the second year, what happens? In the second year, when it is like 4 years to mature, so initially it was a 5 year security, after one year what will happen? Only one year has passed, 4 years to go. When it is 4 years to go, that time the government is supposed borrowing money at 8. That means interest rates have come down. If interest rates come down, it's quite possible, right? Because interest rates are continuously changing. Maybe after the second year, interest rates fall further and they say, you know what? I will borrow two-year money or three-year money now at, let's say, 7%. So after one year, they borrow at 8. After two years, they borrow at 7 and so on and so forth because interest rates can keep falling. Interest rates can move uh, the other way also. It can keep rising. So what really happens is that Without getting into details about the bond mathematics, price is inversely proportional to interest rates. Interest rates. Okay. So when I said I gave 100 rupees to the government, 100 rupees is the price. Okay. So price of buying one, investing into one security of the government. So when interest rates fall, because it is inverse, prices go up. So when interest rates 
fall, prices go up. Okay. And because of this, you know, using this interest rate formula, there is a beautiful concept of duration. Okay. Duration which is there in bonds, which duration tells us the interest rate sensitivity. What it means is that if there is one unit drop of interest rates, how much will be the movement in the price? Correct. Everybody would love to know. Correct. In my previous question, I said, oh, government borrowed at 9, interest rates have now fallen to 8. So, if but if price and interest rates are inversely related, as an investor, I would like to make money, right? So, as an investor, I am making uh, two kinds of returns. I am getting my interest income plus I am looking to make some capital gain. Where will the capital gain come from? Capital gain will come from this interest rate movements. So, if interest rates keep falling, prices will keep rising. If interest, so this is the concept of duration, right? If price interest rates fall, prices go up. But if interest rates go up, prices fall. So, it is inversely related. So, this relationship is the sensitivity. In certain bonds, 1% movement in interest rates will lead to this much movement in prices. Sometimes in other bonds, 1% movement of interest rates can lead to a larger movement in the prices. This variation in the prices, which happens for a single unit of change. So, let me just write it on the blackboard. So, let's assume there is a government security 1, there is a government security 2 and there is a government security 3. Okay. And now, there is one unit change in interest rates okay it can happen that this government security moves the prices move and let's say one unit change then one unit drop in interest rates let's say unit interest rates have dropped this government security can go up by x quite possible this can have go up by 1.5x and this can go up by 2x this, this is the price rise. This is the price rise. Okay. So, as an investor, I would be definitely looking to invest into this one. For a single unit drop in interest rates, I possibly will look to invest into this one because I will make the more capital gain because the price rise is going to be more. Like uh, in the world of equities, you, you look at EPS, right? You look at earnings. Earnings go up. Prices also go up because P by E matters, right? And I will love to get into stocks which have got a superior P by E. Same concept applies here. In the world of fixed income, I would love to get into bonds which have got a higher duration during phases of dropping interest rates, okay? So, this is a lovely concept uh, that all fixed income investors definitely track, okay? And if you are new to the world of fixed income, so, there are two things that we should know like what is the credit risk content and what is the duration risk. What is the duration? Third risk we will cover later, liquidity risk that is not so much in the, in the world of mutual funds. If you are a direct investor into bonds, then definitely that is a risk that one looks at, but not so much in the world of fixed income. Okay. So, if I am looking at credit risk and duration risk together, the second fund that people generally look at after GSEC is called the corporate bond fund. Corporate bond fund. Okay. So, the corporate bond fund has got around 60-65 portion in AAA and the remaining in AA plus or lower. Okay. So, this is a corporate bond fund which is if you are saying AAA that means you can definitely understand by now it has got a you know very low level of credit risk because it's triple A. It's not like double A, double A minus and so on. It is triple A. So, it has got a high level of uh, good quality assets and low level of credit risk. But at the same time, the fund manager can play on duration. Play on duration and keep changing the duration depending upon what their view is about the interest rate movements. Okay. So, the next fund that definitely as a retail investor, you can look at if you are looking to shift your money out of banks into the world of fixed income and get market related returns for yourself 
is first begin with government securities and definitely corporate bond funds. All right. So we will go deeper and stage by stage into other funds. There are other kinds of funds which are liquidity funds, money market funds, treasuries and uh, uh, shorter duration funds and so on. We will look at them. But definitely you should know that in the world of fixed income, there are two things. On one side is your credit risk. And other side is your duration risk. Okay. So if you are going up there, this is the most aggressive one. We are going high on duration, high on credit. And these are low risk ones. These are high risk ones. And these are low risk ones. Okay. So either the funds will be in one of these four quadrants. All right. So one of these four quadrants. GSEC fund is definitely a low credit risk fund. It is extremely low. Duration could be anything. You can just play around the duration. You can, you can go up and down and try to make money. And then there are long duration funds which are high on uh, credit risk and high on duration. So they would all lie here. All right. All the best and hope you did enjoy this video. If you are truly liking these videos, please like us, share these videos and uh, subscribe. Definitely subscribe to these videos and keep commenting. We would love to hear your comments and we will truly respond to each one of them. All the best and happy investing.